In today's motion, we will be having St. Mary Zigoje versus St. Paul's Kivote debating the motion that citizen activism is the most effective way of influencing change in African governments. I read the motion again. Citizen activism is the most effective way of influencing change in African governments. All the best to both teams here in the upper regional debates. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. Dictatorial and selfish African government require intense citizen activism to give a listening ear. Sharon Moga from St. Mary's Igoji here to propose the motion that states citizen activism is the most effective way to influence change in African government. Talking about the, uh, the SDGs number 16, peace, justice, and social institutions are attained. For example, peace is attained from the peaceful demonstrations, Justice through citizen activism, where people are listened to and their rights are served. Strong institutions, these are the institutions that where the government correct, it, correct itself and also fight the rights for the citizens. Uh, act, uh, activism, it is the use of direct and noticeable action to achieve a result which is usually political or social, according to Cambridge Dictionary Online. What citizen activism, it involves the inhabitants of a country in political activities that have social effects, according to Cambridge Dictionary Online. On my first point, we are talking about these political activities. We say according to www.bing.com, it gives uh, the government, their government is given pressure. For example, looking at the 2000, uh, 2007 general election, which resulted to a, a very violent election protest between the leading party and the opposition party. Uh, yeah, the, these two parties, they gave the in attention to the UN, which is the United Nations, to come and give this pressure to this government. Through this UN, the United Nations, Kofi Annan, who was the former Secretary of General, uh, the former Secretary General of United Nations, mediated, mediated between the two parties and created a coalition government. Through this creating a coalition government, the, there was a lot of development in the year 2010. For example, improvement of infrastructures and also improvement of hospital facilities. On my second point, it is uniting people from different ethnic ethnicities. Looking at the uh, demonstrations that are taking place here in Kenya, people are coming together to fight for their rights. Not no matter where it comes, whether you are a Kikuyu, you are a Kama, you are a Kalenjin, you are a Luo, but people come here to fight for their rights. This it's not going to affect people, only one person, but it affects everyone. This like high cost of living, it's affecting many people. It's not affect the, the only a, a specific part, but it affects everyone. This is according to the Daily Nation of March 6, 2023. And I rest my case. Team Opposition, you have three minutes. Now, she talked about peace, social injustice. Well, let me ask you a question. And later, actually, give an example of 2007, 2007 post-general election violence. Now, did the 2007 post-election violence result to peace? Did it? People were fighting all over. Well, we all know you can take a cow to the river, but you cannot force a cow to drink the water. Hi, I am Ryan Kangara from the prestigious Samples High. Here to strongly oppose the motion Citizen activism is the most effective way is the most effective way of influencing change in African government. Well, sadly, let me tell you, it is not. Look, look at this. What if the government doesn't comply with the citizen with the citizens' demands, or how I like to call it, lack of political will? Doesn't effective change often require not only citizen activism but also political will from those in power? If government officials are, willing to are not willing to comply with citizen activism, then citizen activism will prove, will prove futile. Resources are wasted. Lives, resources are wasted, are wasted. Lives are lost. Lives are lost, lost, and time is wasted. Yes. What, what? Look at the mount. Look at the mandamano, the famed mandamano, mandamano Monday. What the, what the citizens 
came out to the streets and started demanding for their rights. But what did they get in return? More higher taxes, more higher taxes, increased food, increased food prices. Let me leave you with that. Now, to my second point, repressive regimes. In, country, in countries with rep repressive regimes, it is not why, it, in countries with repress, repressive regimes, government may stifle and curtail, and curtail, and, and curtail freedom of expression and assembly, citizen activists may face significant risks and obstacles. Let me give you a, let me give you an example of Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine, in January 21st, 2021, Bobby Wine had to flee his, had to flee from Uganda with his children because he had gotten credit, credit he, he had gotten information that President Museveni, who is, is who is his opposition leader, will come and take his, his children and as a way to suppress him and make him to forfeit the general elections. Well, Bobby Wine was in fact, was in fact harassed by President Museveni. Museveni. Threats, were, threats were thrown to, to Bobby Wine and he had to, to, to flee the country. Thank you. In proposition, you have three minutes. Demonstration and man's action seems to be the only language that our government, our African government, seem to understand. I am Tamika Howie from St. Mary's Igoji, and I am here to reaffirm the motion that states that citizen activism is the most e effective way of influencing change in the African governments. He spoke about peace. He asked if peace was actually attained in, during the 2007 post-elections. Well, I want to tell you that clearly peace was actually attained. Because when Kofi Annan came to this country, he came with one mission, to make sure that the two parties actually agreed on one thing, which was, uh, which was peace. And it was actually brought. Um, look at this. The government was, they actually formed a coalition government, and they brought development in infrastructure in the country. Now, we come to this point where we see that African governments have a tendency of making decisions for our, their own countries. Regardless of how the citizens are going to take it, they actually don't, actually, they actually don't care. That's where the citizens come in and they always they come in and they form organizations which will be able to oppose what the governments are doing. Their misdeeds, that's what they're coming to change. And this is the cost of bringing in citizen activism. In, during the, um, on, act, on, on October 8th, 2020, the Nigerian citizen protested. What were they protesting about? They were protesting about police brutality. They wanted to make sure that the government had them. They wanted them to prevent lack of freedom of expression in the government. They made policies which made, them, which made the citizens uncomfortable. In short, they made this organization known as SARS, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad. This brought in not, no peace. There was no peace. There was harassment. There was torture. There was trauma. Now, the, the citizens decided to come together and fight against this. And the result of all this was that the oppositions were hard. The citizens were hard. In short, they dissolved this squad. They dissolved the, social, the special anti-robbery squad. And in turn, it brought in peace. Citizen activism can also advocate for a change in the government strategy. This is according to the CNN News. During, the 29, during 2019, in the months of June and July, we see in Malawi, the citizens of Malawi were protesting. They were protesting with a goal of making sure that their president at that time, Honorable Peter Mutharika, would resign from his position as president. Now, we see that the results of these elections, they were annulled, and they actually got what they wanted. They wanted a new... They wanted... Um, they wanted the elections to be renewed, and that is what happened. I rest my case. Team opposition, second speaker, you have three minutes. Effectiveness, they say. 
What about the damages, the cost, and the time lost? Hi, I'm Roy K. K. Njeru from C the highly reputed St. Paul's High, here to oppose the motion. Citizen activism is the most effective way of influencing change in African government. First, for my first, <laughs> to rebut what you said, you said that they got the independence through peace. How many deaths <laughs> were counted because of this act? How many people lost their lives? Basically, what you're saying to us is that you are willing to do anything, to go to any extra measure just for justice. You're willing to kill fathers that own families so that you can get your own, your own rights. What about the families that have been lost? What are, you going to say? what are you going to say about that? You say that there was improvement of infrastructure. You say hospitals, right? Right now, if you talk about Mandamano Mandi, as my former colleague said, those infrastructures have been torn apart. Those stones have been used to riot over there, the police. <laughs> and you say that it is the best way. If you say that's the best way, what's the alternative? That's a good way to test if your research is credible. If it's not citizen activism, <laughs> just leave it at that. For my first point, I'd like to say you have limited resources and capacity. When you start the movement, you obviously know that <laughs> you do not have enough resources to do that, right? You're just wasting the resources that you're saying you have them in scarcity so that the government can be able to bring them forth towards you. You're saying that you, have, you don't even have everything. You just have the resources to go one day. What if it's, you know, activism is being active. You, <laughs> when you say that, it means that the resources are not in, enough. You're taking risks and obstacles. It may lead to violence and harassment of even the leaders. And we go to cooperation and proposition. Government op op often opposes the ability to co-opt or repress citizen activism movements to, to, remain, to, re to remain authority against their people. So when you say citizen activism, you have to be led by free officers. Isn't that correct? The free officers, are you don't even know their whole motive. They won't be there with you when you're getting tear gassed out of there, are they? They're going to just say, yes, go and do that, go and do that. You don't even know the source of it. You're just waiting for it to be given 100. Just go, go get out of your house, go bring protest out to the people <laughs> hoping for that, hoping that you'll get some you get change. How many lives will be lost? How many people will you how many people will you inconvenience with that? Remember not all the people that go for for Mandamano are rich. <laughs> Even it's the poor people that do that. To be respective, it's the people that are lacking certain things and commodities. I'd like to rest my case. <laughs> Proposition, you have three minutes. The world will not be destroyed. The world will not be destroyed by evil, but by those who watch them without doing anything. My name is Patience Casella from St. Mary's Girls High School here by Turi. I found the motion that states citizen activism is the most effective way of influencing change in African governments. So, to my second opposer, you spoke of the deaths that occurred. Okay, over 1,600 people died, according to www.journalism.com. They died because of the general elections. But let me ask you a question. When activism came, the general elections came, and the people who died, yes, they did die. We did in Carlos. But how many were saved? How many people were indeed saved? Let me take you back to the ancestors there are ways of the back. They used to use this old adage that it seems you've forgotten. Amani haiji ila kwanche upanga. Think about that. You also spoke that the government wants to remain authoritative. Well, it does want to remain authoritative. But it has to remain authoritative Well, looking at the, what the citizens are saying, looking at the will of the citizens. But apparently, they are not. That's why citizen activism is the most effective way and they will bring the change. So how will it do that? Well, when you, s well, 
When they say that the government wants to remain authoritative, well, Nigerians were there dying of a police brutality. At least 56 people died. That is according to www.google.com. That's how many people died. But later, the special anti-robbery squad was dissolved. So how many people are being saved? So to my first point, I'd like to say that citizen activism results to the improvement of the environment and the democracy. The late Wangari Madai, a very special person, a woman whom we all adore, and maybe is also your role model. She fought about the 60-story building that was to be built in Uhuru Park through activism. Is it there today? Is it? Well, I guess you know the answer. Two, Wangari Madai fought for the repeal of the cons Kenyan Constitution, Section 2A, during Moi's government, through activism. It's quite clear, activism is bringing change to African governments. Without activism, because a government seem to understand when people demonstrate. And also let's come back to our country, Kenya. Because of, you were speaking about resources being lost and deaths being occurred and tear gas being thrown. Well, how much resources have been lost? You haven't given me the statistics. How much resources have been lost? Because the resources that are being lost, yes, they are being lost, but people are suffering. Do you prefer people to suffer at the expense of resources, resources that you're building? Well, I guess you'll answer my question. Thank you. Team opposition, you have three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as I start with an example, a sheep, ask yourself, why a sheep has a rope on his neck. And therefore, uh, when it c the reason is, when it comes into dative, until it, it can't be controlled, the shepherds are ready to control it. And therefore, when you see that government wants to remain the alt uh, authority, let's say, as my first, my first proposer said, that uh, in, in the government may lack political will. And this political will is often citizen activism also the government may, may have that may, may lack the will to change what you need. Maybe your needs are you lack food, you lack other things, but remember that the government has their uh, their they are uh, the point lack of political will. We say that uh, the government may lack the will to to agree with your with your with your case in the in the in the yeah. Remember, citizen activism. I agree with you. It can be effective in influencing change, and it is important for you to recognize that just that that citizen activism is just one approach among many. Other means like engaging in political processes, uh, advocating for policy reforms, and like dialogue and cooperations between civil societies also contribute in political change. And therefore, as I continue, remember that the government uh, may, may have the regimes to, and rep the repressive regimes against the uh, activists. The activists may engage in through harassment to stop the, the, the what, they are, what they are proposing. And therefore, let's say the example of Dedan Kimadi. Dedan Kimadi was fighting for the independence. Therefore, the whites took him, harassed him, and killed him. For now, we are talking for the late Dedan Kimadi. Therefore, I rest my case. Team proposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. They did agree that citizen activism is the most effective way, right? Anyway, they spoke about dialogue. Raila, the main person who is in the oppositions right now, and our honorable president, Ruto. Didn't they build a committee? Did the dialogue work? Apparently, it didn't. So, actions speak louder than words, and citizen activism is the most effective way, because it's bringing action. 
Kenya has changed through citizen activism. The 2000 general elections and also the demonstrations that are taking place right now. So I'll face neither east nor west. Backwards, I won't face. I'll only face forwards and still say that citizen activism is the most effective way of influencing change in African governments. I do rest my case. Team Opposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. They say that it has helped so many countries, yet an example that I've got in myself is only Kenya. Kenya this, Kenya that. Is it the only African country? Is it really the only African country? You haven't named any other countries who have used citizen activism. There's no evidence that this, it has worked. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No evidence. And you see that the government, even if the government is crumbling, it always needs to stay still. It always needs to stay affirmed, right? Even if, 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 let's say the government starts crumbling and says that we can't do this, we can't do that anymore, when the citizens get tired, if you, if you want them to take action and they have no choice, what are they supposed to do? Are they, are they the purpose of, for example, countries like Ukraine and Russia fighting? Are they? They are not. And they have no other alternative than to wait and see the outcome, even though things are happening beneath the waters. Thank you. Sharon, um, you defined the terms, but you talked about only the aspect of citizen activism. Um, you, this motion had other components. Is it the most effective way? And is it influencing change? And there's also the aspect of African governments. How do we correlate all this so that when you're even giving your examples, we can see that this activism has actually led to this influence uh, on, on, uh, on African governments and the way they operate. Um, Tamika, you made a very general statement that African governments don't actually care. That's, um, that's a very general statement and it's a bit on the dangerous side because I don't think there's a government that doesn't actually care. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but your examples were good in uh, Nigeria, Malawi, very good speaker, you were composed, you had your points, the, the evidence, the citation, that was a very good uh, debate from you. Uh, the same for com uh, patients, you are composed. But for your team, generally I wanted to see, because the, the boys really insisted on this issue of uh, loss of lives, loss of lives. Is citizen activism only picketing? Are there other ways? You should have easily dismantled the argument because citizen activism is not just picketing, manda mano. There are other ways. Is boycotting products a way of citizen activism? Is, are there any other ways of actually engaging citizens in terms of uh, being activists? So I'd have loved to see that as, a, as, a, as something coming up from your debate. Thank you and all the best. the boys, St. Paul's, and the first speaker comes and throws in some very good questions as opposition, which is a good start. The, then you start giving us examples of what citizen activism does, the resources are wasted, lives are lost, all that. But the question still stands. If citizen activism, if you're uh, opposing this motion, is the most effective or is not the most effective, then what is? All right? That was the question that we needed it as an answer from you, and we didn't get it. From where I sit, I didn't hear any of an alternative of what you said. You only give us the disadvantages of what uh, citizen activism does. Because Roy comes, gives good questions, good rebuttals, you know. However, you make stress statements that could be penalized, all right? We'll go straight ahead to the results. The judges have awarded St. Paul's with 56%. A round of applause, please, for St. Paul's. And the judges have awarded St. Mary Girls Igoji with 68%. A round of applause, please, for St. Mary's. And the winners of this debate is St. Mary Girls Igoji for the junior team.
And we have come to the end of this debate. Thank you very much to both teams on, e on, our, on our side here. And make sure to check our social media handles for more of these conversations on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on TikTok at The Debate Circle. Goodbye from us. <laughs>